Hello and welcome to another edition of Lab Matters. We're here talking spam with Daria Gudkova, head of our content technologies and research team. Daria, I want to talk specifically about uh, how spam has become a major conduit for actual malware attacks. So it's not just spam advertising, not just Viagra advertising, not just some of the things that have become associated with spam in the past, but spam has become a big vehicle for uh, malware, malware distribution. Talk a little bit about whether you've, has, has there been a dramatic growth in malware in spam or is it declining? What are some of the things you're seeing? Uh, yeah, there's actually been a dramatic growth this year. Um, every year we're talking to our users that spam is not just uh, some advertising, not uh, very safe. Uh, right. Actually, it's dangerous because there are a lot of uh, fraud, phishing, and uh, um, the goods uh, that are advertised in spam are um, often counterfeit goods or just uh, forgery, and they can be dangerous. Right. But this year, um, it was not uh, only uh, phishing, not only fraud, but also a huge amount of malware in spam. Uh, it was. Uh, 2.2% of all spam uh, was uh, spam with malware attachments. Uh, in 2010? Yeah. Okay, so about and more in than 2% of... Uh, uh, usually it's about, it's less than 1% okay. of some, uh, such kind of spam. And in uh, summer, in August, the amount of sp uh, such spam was just tremendous. It was about 6.3%. Uh, okay. What does malware in spam look like these days? Is it, is it a lot of executables? Is it a lot of uh, attachments, you know, attachments bearing uh, the actual mm -hmm. malware? Or are we seeing a lot more of, you know, sending the user to a malicious website to actually download the malware? Talk a little bit about what it, what it looks like. Actually, there are um, all of kinds. Uh, mm -hmm. There are uh, executable attachments, but actually not very much. Uh, and uh, the trend of this year, there were uh, HTML attachments. Okay. And a person who opened them, he, uh, or she came to some site which was, uh, um, which contained some malware links. Right. Do you track where, where a lot of this stuff is coming from? So, uh, some of the botnets that are pushing uh, this type of malware and spam. And are we, do we know whether it's, uh, whether it's botnets being rented by different groups? Are we tracking it at that level or that's not something your team does? Uh, we're not tracking uh, botnets uh, this way, but I can tell that a lot of malicious spam came from Bridle Up botnets. And after the closure of this botnet mm -hmm. in October, the amount of malicious spam just dropped. It was about zero in Right, October. so there was a significant drop based on just that single takedown. Mm, yes. Do you get a sense that a lot of law enforcement activity has had a, a major effect on not just spam, but uh, you know, uh, malware attacks associated with those botnets, or are, are we just seeing a lot of it being shifted to other botnets, or, 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 or you know, just uh, the the question is, it has the, the drop has been dramatic, but are we seeing? them rebuilding in other areas or are we seeing it kind of disappearing? Uh, of course they're rebuilding but uh, it's a process uh, which takes some time. Uh, now after the closure of different botnets uh, last year and there were really um, a lot of uh, botnets CNC closed. Right. Uh, I can name Lithic botnet, uh, Validag botnet, uh, uh, Breedle Up uh, botnet and Pushtalk Atwail botnet. Okay. Uh, and, uh, after the closure of all of these uh, botnets, the amount of spam uh, dropped and the amount of malicious spam dropped also. Uh, but uh, uh, now uh, the criminals are trying to reorganize their botnets and we see actually that they are trying to do it uh, in countries which don't have proper law enforcement in this area. Right, right. Uh, for example, the amount of spam from USA uh, just uh, dropped and it stopped on that level. Uh, but uh, we see that there are, uh, in uh, last month, uh, in November and December, um, there are uh, a lot of malicious spam sent to uh, such countries as uh, India, uh, Russia, Vietnam. Um, so some of the target countries are beginning to be newer. Yeah, some countries uh, which I think uh, the criminals are going to organize botnets in. Countries without proper uh, laws against spam. Right, right, right. What, can you look back at 2010 and identify some of the, you know, would you say some of the main trends uh, around spam, spam activity in 2010? What are some of, you know, uh, s some certain directions you're noticing? Have, have there been anything noticeable? Mm, 
Actually, uh, the malicious uh, spam and uh, uh, its amount was uh, the main tendency for right. the When you say malicious spam, you're talking about malware and spam. Uh, I talk not only about malware and spam, I mean right. not only attachments, but also links uh, to some um, mm -hmm. compromised websites. Right. W w are you seeing a lot of uh, creativity around uh, spam lures? Or, or are you seeing a lot of, you know, a lot of using of social networking maybe, a lot of Facebook and Twitter in there? Are you, what are some of the newer techniques mm -hmm. uh, they're using to get people to go to these websites? Talk a little bit about it. Uh, actually, there are uh, almost no uh, techniques, uh, meaning uh, some ways of sending spam and bypassing filters, but there are actually techniques to uh, bypass some uh, people protection. Right, right, uh, right. Just, uh, just to get... The um, criminals began to use some social engineering, some tricks which were um, before common uh, only to fishers. Mm -hmm. uh, to send some notification from some um, common resource, uh, the resource which uh, a lot of people use actually, such as Facebook, as you have said, uh, such as Twitter, and actually uh, in, uh, in summer when the amount of such malicious attacks were, uh, was huge, mm -hmm. uh, there were uh, some uh, mails uh, which, uh, uh, which looked like t notifications from different online shops, uh, popular right, right, shops, right. and some uh, uh, hostings. Uh, um, actually, uh, there were so many uh, different sites and services uh, uh, very, um, um, uh, very well known right. uh, uh, just in this spam that I think uh, there are very few people who don't have uh, any account in any of the, uh, these systems. Right. Uh, and uh, they look exactly like the real notification. Right, right, right. It, it, the, the, the the actual visual display is exactly the same. So yeah, it exactly the same, and not, not, not only visual. Uh, there were some technical headers in these mails which were uh, also uh, forged to, to look like the real one. Wow. Uh, can you look ahead to 2011 this year and make me two top predictions? Wait, two? Put you on the spot. Yeah, just two, two predictions, two main trend type predictions that you think we'll see around spam mm -hmm. activity this year. First of all, I think uh, there will be uh, some spam which also will imply some techniques of different fields. I mean, social engineering, uh, some uh, sending uh, and bypassing filters techniques, and uh, some other complex uh, attacks uh, uh, when spam uh, contains malware and uh, it uh, is a part of affiliate program. Uh, I think mm -hmm. complex uh, in general will be uh, some of uh, trends. A lot of things. All right, thank you very much, Daria. And thank you for watching another edition of Lab Matters, a webcast from Kaspersky Lab. <laughs>